it makes sense completely. It did come a little bit as a shock just in the timing because Manny Diaz happened to have been giving his uh, a Zoom meeting presser, you know, about, okay, well, you know, we're going to, this is where we, it was the day before practice start. Practice started yesterday, by the way, fall camp. Uh, just going to throw that out there. I know that it's kind of a crazy time, but yeah, the day before uh, that he was, Manny Diaz was giving his uh, a Zoom meeting, press conference and things like that. And he had literally just not too far in front of that said, you know, I think you know, all of our guys are going to be here. Nobody's told me that they're opting out, you know, like when we hit the field tomorrow and he gets a text message and he looks down, and they have the screenshots of it. It's kind of funny, but he gets a text and he looks down and his face drops. And then he comes back and this is like, well, Greg Russo actually just texted me that he's, he's opting out of the season and, you know, things like that. And it's, it's a big loss. You know, he's one of the best players on the team. Uh, obviously 15 and a half sacks as a redshirt freshman, uh, you know, just a dynamic player at six, seven two sixty uh, as an ed- edge rusher. Uh, obviously he can beat you on the edge. As you saw against Florida state, uh, you twist him inside against these uh, offensive guards and centers uh, who maybe are not as adept at pass blocking as the tackles. And I mean, he had four sacks in that game alone uh, against Florida state, but yeah, you know, he's a, Gregory Russo is going to be a first round draft pick. I mean, and the, you know, people are saying, oh, you know, maybe he needs to show more on film, but you know, there's all these mock drafts that have him, you know, third, fifth, 12th, 11th, sixth, you know, like just top 15, like, you know, it's really, uh, it's a thing where you, and this, and I know that, you know, obviously the colloquialism in recruiting is, oh, you make a business decision for going to whatever school. This is a literal business decision for Gregory Russo. It just is. And it, it is tough because he's one of the best players on the team. Um, I don't know what's going on with Paul Scoop. Uh, I know who that person is. I don't, I don't know anything, so I can't answer that. Uh, but getting back to Gregory Russo, yeah, you know, he has to make a decision what's best for him and his family. His mother is an ER a COVID nurse and everything, and he's, uh, you know, she's on the front lines all the time. And he made mention that he was going to uh, help them in some kind of a way. And I mean, that could maybe be during this time in the fall. And obviously, you know, if you're a first round draft pick and you get this uh, eight figure guaranteed salary or contract, um, you know, two commas with two digits in front of it. Look, man, you got to do what you got to do. And that's the kind of money that if you use it right, can change the financial path of your family for generations. Uh, and that's what people talk about. That's why, you know, these guys, you know, like I come from the mud and I can't go back, you know, these guys from the mud, these guys from the city, um, in Miami, appreciate the happy birthday wish, uh, you know, but like they, you know, can't go back is the thing that Pomani Jones talks about with some of these basketball players. Like, you know, they go through the D league and they go through all this stuff. Look, cause I can't go back. Like it's tough, man, you know, and he has this unique physicality, you know, and he has this incredible talent. Uh, And people have already seen it and been evaluating it. Uh, You know, I've seen uh, just every or tons of NFL draft guys. You know, you got Matt Bowen, you got uh, Matt Miller, you got uh, Daniel Jeremiah, um, you got other guys who make a living as draft analysts and player evaluators. And they're all just saying all these glowing things about Gregory Russo. The only way, the only thing that could happen is, uh, you know, you can get hurt or something, uh, yeah, or, or anything with COVID, and that could just be negative for him. Uh, and, and that's what he is thinking as well. So uh, it's a tough decision, obviously, for the Hurricanes. So you take him um, off of the roster. I mean, on the roster, on scholarship, but he's not going to play this year. So uh, that does change things. Um, to replace him uh, back in the number 15 jersey, which he wore in high school and also uh, – when he started out at UCLA is Jalen Phillips, the number one overall recruit a few years ago in 2017, I believe that was um, in America. And he, uh, yeah, he's already, and we already saw it. He's put it up on social media. He was wearing it at practice yesterday. He's like, cool. Look, I get it. I was going to wear 95 and I was fine with that. But I'm saying if 15 is available and y'all know that I always wore 15, you know what I mean? Let me get that. So then he got it. And he's a guy who's, you know, 6'6", 260, almost 270. Uh, Jalen Phillips, or six, yeah, 6'5", 6'6", 265, 270. And during their speed testing, this is a guy who hit 22 miles an hour on sprints. What? At that size? That's like, 
that's almost touching Tyreek Hill kind of speed. You know what I mean? 22 miles an hour on a sprint is ridiculous speed. And you got this mountain of a man doing that. He is going to be in there. Jafari Harvey is another guy who uh, everybody is saying might be the most, most athletic guy out of any of those guys at defensive end. And you're talking about a Jalen Phillips at 6'6", 260 something, hitting 22 miles an hour on sprints. You got Gregory Russo, who's 6'7", with a 7'3 wingspan, and he had 15 and a half sacks as a redshirt freshman. You got Quincy Roche, who's the current AAC reigning defensive player of the year when he was at Temple with 13 and a half sacks last year. And Jafari Harvey might be more athletic than these three athletic guys who are known because of their athleticism. And then you have these younger guys as well. Um, Cameron Williams, uh, you know, great first name. Uh, Miami, Sh or sorry, Hollywood, uh, Shamanah Madonna. So if you're going back, you're thinking, okay, we have a couple guys from Shamanah committed. Here's another one who's already on the roster. He's 6'5", 245 with, you know, a 6'7", six, 6'8", six, wingspan. Boom, there goes that guy. You've just signed a bunch of defensive ends in this last class, maybe a Chance Williams, maybe a Quentin Williams. You know, these guys, there are numbers there. But to obviously say any of those guys are going to come in and have the impact of Russo right now, especially the freshman guys, I think that that's a bridge too far. But what I will say is you automatically elevate Jalen Phillips to the number one on the other side across from Quincy Roche. That's how you replace him. Boom, like that. You know, and I know that Gary Russo was a three-star recruit. We've talked about that. He shouldn't have been, da, 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 da. but his performance was all American. But then you take a number one overall five-star recruit, you put him with a reigning defensive conference player of the uh, defensive player of the year. Then you have Jafari Harvey right behind him and you uh, work in some of these other guys as well. There are ways to replace a Gregory Russo, at least in the aggregate, not on the one per one, but, you know, uh, as a group, I think that that can't, even with it maybe still being a little bit of a step down just because of what Gregory Russo did and can do. Um, I would say that's where you're going to start with it. Jalen Phillips starts opposite Quincy Roche. Jafari Harvey gets to a really a really great chance to have a Gregory Russo or a um, – who was the one before? Jonathan Garvin when he was just coming in off the bench and he was wreaking havoc. Maybe Jafari Harvey is that, that guy is your number three defensive end, and there's other guys as well. Jafari Harvey's name was mentioned a few times in this live chat and also some discussions yesterday – your prospects about him and other defensive ends with Phillips being obviously the headliner to fill in automatically and be a star potentially 15 sacks. Let's not hold him to that standard. Whoa. He could have a tremendous campaign and obviously they're playing less games too. Um, but in regards to obviously the depth and a guy that could be uh, play a role and make an impact at times, uh, who are you looking at? Yeah, I mean, obviously, Quincy Roche and Jalen Phillips are not going to be your starting defensive ends. Uh, Jafari Harvey coming in as your number three uh, off the bench. Uh, he, he's going to be a guy that's going to play a lot. Uh, and again, I, I do have high expectations for him just because um, of just who he is and his, his recruiting caliber and everything. Um, so that's another guy. Uh, sorry, I had to open up the roster really quickly. Again, in the same class as Jafari Harvey, Cameron Williams. Uh, he's a guy uh, who has uh, just immense physical potential as well as defensive end. Uh, Jason Blissett, I don't know where he's playing. I don't know if he's playing inside or outside. There was talk that he had moved from defensive tackle to defensive end. Uh, and that's a guy who maybe could uh, get some reps also. And then you did bring in three true freshmen uh, this past recruiting cycle in Chance Williams, Elijah Roberts, and Quinton Williams. Chan the Williams boys, not related. None of them are related. Uh, Quinton Chance or Cam, all last name Williams, all played defensive end. None of them related. <laughs> Weird, but the the younger ones, I, I think it'll take a real, real big effort for them to see the field this year. Of them, I would say Chance probably has the uh, better ability just because of his physicality. Because uh, Quentin Williams is a little bit shorter, uh, so he's uh, he's a little bit more of a tweener. Whereas Chance Williams is more of your stereotypical six four two forty five defensive end. Uh, and Elijah Roberts, I think he could play end or he could be that kind of athletic defensive tackle a la R.J. McIntosh, which is uh, the comparison that we made because uh, he was like 6'3", 275 in high school. And I mean, that's before you really get on a nutrition program. That's before anything. So you're, you're a cheeseburger away from 290, basically that size, which is a great size for a defensive tackle. You know what I mean? Um, so I think that he's probably trending towards going inside, uh, but maybe he slims down and trims down and, and stays outside. Uh, we'll see. But, yeah, th those are the guys. But, I mean, yeah, it's really going to be 
the trio of Jalen Phillips, Quincy Roche, and Jafari Harvey, and then whoever slots in behind them. 